What's up, Soul Hills kids? I am super excited that you guys are here today. Guys, we're like super close to Halloween. Hold on, let me do the math. Next week, next week. Yeah, we're like a week away from Halloween, guys. I hope you're excited because I'm excited, guys. Halloween is going to be super fun. If you don't know, City Station is having a Halloween event here on Halloween from 5 to 7. If you guys want to come trick-or-treat in a safe, warm, weather-free environment, we would love for you guys to come hang out. And with that, let's jump into today's story, guys. So today's story revolves around Abraham. Now, I'm not talking about the president. No, I'm talking about Abraham, who's actually the father of Israel. And you may think, how can you be the father of an entire nation? Well, we'll look into that a little bit in the story. But before we start, I want to run an exercise with you, right? Not a physical exercise either, I know, but a mental exercise. So I want you guys to think with me. Have you ever made a promise before? You know, you told your friend you promised you would bring something to school the next day to show them, or you promised your mom you would clean your room when you got home from school later that day, or you promised your teacher that you would do your homework before the end of the week. Now, here's the reality is that a lot of times we don't actually fulfill those promises, do we? Sometimes we forget to clean our rooms. Sometimes we choose video games over our homework. And sometimes we just don't bring what we said we would bring. The reality is we make promises a lot and sometimes we just can't keep them. So how do we know that God can keep his promises, huh? He makes promises. He made a promise that he would never flood the world again last week with Noah uh, or two weeks ago with Noah. And how do we know he can keep that? Well, because we know God is trustworthy. And this story is about a promise as well. You see, Abraham was made and given a promise. And so we're gonna look at that promise. So let's jump into today's Bible story and then we'll recap it after that. So I'll see you guys there. Abram and his wife Sarai were part of Noah's family who had spread out on earth after the great flood. God chose Abram for a special plan. He told Abram to move to a place that he had never been. God promised to give Abram a large family and land for his family. All the peoples on earth will be blessed through you, God said. This was a good promise, but Abram was sad because he didn't have any children to inherit his blessing. Still, Abram obeyed God. He went to the land of Canaan with his wife and nephew. One night, God led Abram outside. Look at the sky and count the stars, if you can, God said. Abram couldn't count the stars, there were too many. Your family will be that numerous, God promised. Abram believed God and God was pleased. God said, I will give this land to your descendants. How can I be sure, Abram asked. So God did something to show Abram that he would keep his covenant or promise. First, God told Abram to bring five animals, a cow, a goat, a ram, a turtle dove, and a pigeon. Abram obeyed God. He brought the animals, cut them in half, and laid the pieces across from each other. Then when the sun was setting, Abram fell fast asleep. While Abram slept, God told him what would happen in the future. He said Abram's family would be slaves in another country for 400 years. Then God would judge that nation and bless Abram's family. But first, Abram would live a long, peaceful life. When it was dark, a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch passed between the animals. These items represented God. This showed that God would be responsible for keeping his promise. When Abram was 99 years old, God talked to him again. I am changing your name to Abraham, God said. You will be the father of many children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. They will become many nations, and some of them will be kings. I will give them the land where you are living, and I will be their God. My promises will last forever. God was so serious about his promise that he changed Abram's name to Abraham, which means father of many. He changed Sarai's name to Sarah. God said, I will bless Sarah. She will have a son and you will name him Isaac. God promised to keep his covenant through Isaac and his future family. 
God promised to bless all the world through Abraham. God sent Jesus from his home in heaven to be born on earth into Abraham's family. Through Jesus, all the nations of the earth are blessed because Jesus saves people from their sins. All right, guys, so Abraham was given a promise. If you saw in the story, we're going to jump into that verse and look. So this is going to be in Genesis chapter 15. That's the big 15, and then we're going to be looking at the little number of four, okay? And we're going to start there. And so Abraham was like, how am I going to, I think, you know, I'm going to die, and I don't have kids, and so everyone else is going to get my stuff. And God's like, no, no, no. The Lord said to him, no, your servants will not be your heir. For you will have a son of your own who will be your heir. And if you don't know what an heir is, an heir, H-E-I-R, is somebody who inherits all of your property. It's somebody who gets everything after you're gone, right? And so the Lord says you're going to have an heir. You're going to have an heir who's going to inherit everything. And so the Lord took Abraham outside and said to him, Look into the sky and count the stars if you can. That's how many descendants you will have. And Abraham believed the Lord, and the Lord counted him as righteous because of his faith. That's pretty crazy. So Abraham can't have kids. You see, Abraham and Sarah were really old. When I say really old, like probably older than your grandparents old, he was in his 90s. Yikes. That's really old. And Abraham was as well. Or Abraham and Sarah, they were both really old and Here's the thing is you can't really have kids when you're that old. Your body just doesn't do that anymore, and it can't have kids. And so Abraham's like, how am I supposed to be the father of a nation that counts the stars, right? As many as the stars. Have you ever looked up and seen all of the stars? Or how about this? Have you ever gone camping out in the woods away from the city, and you looked up, and there was just stars everywhere? It's crazy how many stars there are. And God said, you're going to have as many kids as that. Now... Abraham didn't literally have that many kids, but this story is really big. In fact, it goes over eight chapters that we look at. And here's the reality is Abraham trusts God's promise. Now, he also loses that faith as time passes. He ends up having a kid with somebody else named Ishmael, and Ishmael, well, it got ugly. Um, Sarah, who was Abraham's wife, was jealous. And so the jealousy ended up splitting the family apart. Now, here's the thing, is after all of that, the jealousy happened because Abraham and Sarah had a kid. Sarah had a kid. God blessed and fulfilled his promise. And that kid, that kid was the kid who would be the father of somebody, who would be the father of somebody, who would be the father of somebody who grew into a mighty, mighty nation, okay? So Abraham had a kid named Isaac. And Isaac ultimately gave birth to kids who gave birth to kids. And we see the whole nation of Israel come from this one kid. So God fulfilled his promise. He said, Abraham, because of your faith, you're going to be the father of many nations. And he was not lying. You see, God keeps his promises. God keeps his word. God fulfills what he says he will fulfill. Later on, we're going to see Abraham get tested. He's going to be tested with his faith and his faith in God and his promise. And we're going to see Abraham actually succeed in this test. But what we want to focus on right now is that God will fulfill his promise. And you see, ultimately, God gave us a promise in Genesis chapter 3. He said there will be someone who will crush the head of the snake, who will defeat Satan. And by giving Abraham a son and by creating the nation of Israel, God was setting up that promise, right? You know that ultimately through Abraham and his family and the descendants of Abraham that Jesus was born. It is through him that we get Jesus. And so when God makes a promise, he means it. And for us, that means that we are saved. You see, Jesus died for us on the sin on the cross for our sin. And when he rose again, he fulfilled that promise and he gives us a way to be in community and communion with God. 
So remember guys, God will always fulfill his promise no matter what, no matter how impossible it seems. When God gives us a promise, he will fulfill it. So we can trust God no matter what. Thank you so much for watching guys. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see y'all next week with our next episode. Bye.